Imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed with dreams given to you by life. The ideas that you never acted on. The talents, the gifts, the abilities that you never used. And there they are, standing around your bed, looking at you with large, angry eyes, saying, we came to you, and only you could have given us life, and now we must die with you forever. And the question is, if you die this very moment, what will die with you? What dreams, what ideas, what talent, what greatness that you showed up to bring? Don't allow fear of failure and the attractiveness of playing it safe in life to draw you in. You can't get out of life alive. You've got to die to leave here. You have something special. You have greatness within you. You were born phenomenal. Listen to me. You were literally born phenomenal, like the whole process. Like, there are like five million options in the womb. We're not talking about one sperm cell and one egg. There are five million options. And out of five million options, you made it. They've got to make their way through a complex series of environments in a, in a kind of warfare. It is warfare. Innately, innately, everything about you is great. Everything about you is phenomenal. But the problem is, you have consciously chosen to be average. You are average in school. You are average at your workplace. Everything you do is average, and not because it's average, but because you made a decision. You made a choice to be average. Why? Because the people around you are average. Or maybe you grew up in an average environment, or went to an average school, or you worked for an average company, so you decided. You've decided to go against who you are. You've decided to go against who you are. So that's why you go to the basketball games. That's why you spend hours watching your favorite athlete, right? Right? Because when you watch them, you watch them. There's something about you that's attracted to that greatness because there's something in you that's great. That's why. That's why you put those headphones on and you just shut the whole world out and you listen to your favorite artist. You listen to them sing or you listen to them rap. And, and deep down inside, you hurt when you listen because it should be you. You are attracted to greatness because greatness is all in you. But it's easier to watch greatness. It's easier to go see greatness than it is to put in the time, to put in the energy, to, to discipline yourself, to sacrifice. It's easier. And so that's why you average and so you frustrated because you're not living like you should live. No, you don't have what you should have. You're not being who you should be. But I would hate to live and die and never know what would happen if I ever committed myself to anything. But you've never seen what you could be if you threw your whole self at your dream. It's time for you to look within yourself and decide that I'm in charge of my destiny. I'm in charge here. And when you decide I'm going to do it, the universe will yield to you. And life will never be the same again. Live your dream. The kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. And that if you decide that my life deserves my developing this what I do well, and becoming the best at it, and mastering myself, and seeing what I have within me, I grant you, you'll never ever be without. I'm telling you, greatness is here. Greatness is upon you. You better act like it. Where it's the right time to do a great thing. 
if you're waiting for that perfect perfect moment that perfect timing is not going to happen you know what you have to do you have to create the perfect time and the perfect opportunity and the perfect situation it's that a lot of people become comfortable they stop growing they stop wanting anything, they, they become satisfied. People getting ready to go to jobs that they don't like. Jobs that are making them sick. You see, when you're not pursuing your goal, you are literally committing spiritual suicide. When you have some goal out here that you're stretching for and reaching for, that takes you out of your comfort zone, you'll find out some talents and abilities you have that you didn't know you have. When the messenger of misery visits you, what are you going to do? What will keep you in the game? There are things that you think you'll never need to know that you may only need to know one time in your life, but that could save your life because you had that knowledge. Unless you attempt to do something beyond that which you've already mastered, you will never grow. What is it that you looked at at some point in time and you decided that you couldn't do it? That you talk yourself out of it? You're waiting on your next door neighbor to make it happen for you, it may not happen. If you're waiting on your mother or your father, they may be so ancient in their thinking that they don't understand this opportunity that you have. And if you're waiting on them, it may never get done. You don't beg average people to be phenomenal. You don't beg good people to be phenomenal. You just are phenomenal and you will attract phenomenal. What reason can you remember that you can call on, that you can reach on, that can make you get back up? Find that reason. If you're not where you are, if you're not where you want to be, if you don't have what you want, want to have, if you're not where you think you should be at this particular place, it has nothing to do with the system, but it has everything to do with the fact that you're not making the sacrifice. I want you to make that dream become a reality because if you don't, you will be working for somebody else to make their dreams become a reality. Everybody is against you or don't believe in you no more. And let me tell you something, that's a lonely feeling. It's a lonely feeling, particularly people that you're doing it for. Most people take their greatness, take their ideas to the graveyard with them. Listen to me, if it was easy, everybody would do it. There are people right now who are working who don't want to work. There are people who hate their jobs, but they keep getting up to do it. The wealthiest place on the planet is the graveyard. Because in the graveyard we will find inventions that we never ever were exposed to. Ideas, dreams that never became reality. Hopes and aspirations that were never acted upon. The question is what are you going to do with your time? What drives you? And greatness is a lot of small things done well. Day after day. Workout after workout, obedience after obedience, day after day. When things don't work out for you, when things happen that you could not anticipate, what are the reasons that you can think of that can keep you strong? You will never ever be successful until you turn your pain into greatness, until you allow your pain to push you from where you are to push you to where you need to be. Stop running from your pain and embrace your pain. Your pain is going to be a part of your prize, a part of your product. I, I challenge you to push yourself. See, it's easy to be on the bottom. It doesn't take any effort to be a loser. It doesn't take any motivation, any drive in order to stay down there on a low level. But it calls on everything in you. You have to harness your will to say, I'm going to challenge myself. I mean that what you did last week don't count. Today, today is the only important day. There are 86,400 seconds in a day, and how you use those are critical. You got 86,400 today, and what you do today is going to see me who you are. Nobody's going to talk about what you did last week. That the biggest enemy you have to deal with is yourself. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm.
you have this opportunity of a lifetime. It means absolutely nothing if you don't take advantage of it in the lifetime of this opportunity. I got a saying that when life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for, to work day and night for, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for, if all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, See, it's time now. If you want to make this your decade, you've got to start saying yes to your life. You've got to start saying yes to your dreams. Yes to your unfolding future. Yes to your potential. As opposed to saying no. When you die, die on E. Leave no dream left behind, guys. Leave no opportunity left behind. When you leave this earth, accomplish every single thing you can accomplish. Listen to me, you're gonna be here one day, but you'll never get here if you give up, if you give in, if you quit. And finally, guys, you gotta wanna succeed as bad as you wanna breathe. You heard me tell the story with the lion and gazelle. You still stuck, you're a gazelle. You are, you are a gazelle. You need something to motivate you. What happens? to the gazelle when the lion ain't chasing him. But what happens is, he nothing, he stops running. Why? Because he always needs something external to motivate him. There are a lot of people, you're not successful in life, not because you ain't got talent, not because you ain't got skills, but your character ain't right. And I've told you this before, that if you're not careful, your talent will take you places that your character can't keep you. So what's your motive? The reason why you can't get up at four o'clock in the morning, the reason why when I say get up at six, you're looking at me like I'm crazy, is because you don't have that thing that's driving you, that's pushing you to say no to the alarm clock and wake up no to the snooze button. When, when you get that extra assignment, that extra lap, the reason why you can't do it is because you don't have the right to that motive that's pushing the action. What's your why? Somebody came up to me. They said, E.T., man, I'm tired. I put in the work, E.T., I'm not seeing the results. I did what you told me to do. I read the book you told me to read. I put in the hours you told me to put in. E, I'm doing it, and I'm not seeing anything. Listen to me closely. Why do you do what you do, and that's so important? It's not enough just to be a doctor. You got doctors who got terrible bedside manners. Terrible. You got lawyers who are skilled but arrogant. If we talk about character right now, what's your motive? What moves you? What drives you? And whatever it is, sports, life, business, whatever it is, help. Listen to me very closely. You gotta change that mindset. Just wait. Your action, while your action is good, you gotta ask what drives it, what guides it, what moves it, what's the spirit behind it, what's the reason behind it, what's the purpose behind it. When you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, when you ain't got nothing left in your tank, you gotta think about the people in your life that you're doing this for, and then if you could think about them, you could go one more mile, you could go one more day at work. You can find a, you can find a scholarship. Listen to me, when you're doing it for somebody else, when you like that lion, if I don't grind, if we don't grind, if I don't grind, they don't eat. This is it. This is I can't, I can't, I can't. I wish I could back off, but it's for me.